In central Arizona lies the town of Gilbert. At an impressive growth rate of over 10% annually for the last 40 years, this metropolitan area now boasts a population of over 270,000 people. But amidst the synthetic jungle of concrete buildings and roadways, there exists a peaceful wildlife sanctuary. There is very little rain here. The climate is that of a hot subtropical desert. Temperatures soar over the long summer months, and the winters are warm and mild. The riparian preserve at Water Ranch is a 110-acre water recycling facility. Wastewater is treated and piped into recovery basins, replenishing the underground water supply for local homes and businesses. This gives rise to conservation areas where animals and plant life thrive in what would otherwise be a hot, dry desert. The land is managed by the Riparian Institute and is open to the public. Annually, thousands of visitors enjoy bird watching, photography, picnicking, and other activities. Through over four miles of canopied pathways, people enjoy the tranquility of the preserve, often walking pets or simply enjoying time with family and friends. Humans, however, are not the only inhabitants on this oasis. Several species of ducks and similar types of birds are observable here, including the northern shoveler, the ring-necked duck, and the American coot. Seen here, floating quietly along, it is often mistaken for a duck, but it is actually a rail. Another type of rail is the North American common gallinule. It is a common breeding bird in marshlands and lakes that are well vegetated. Consuming large amounts of vegetable material, it forages beside the water. In natural settings, the bird often tends to remain secretive and in hiding, but can become more comfortable in certain environments. By far, however, the most common duck of them all at the Riparian is the mallard. The mallard, or wild duck, is a dabbling duck. Males are more brightly colored with iridescence, while the hens have a more brown speckled plumage. They can be found throughout the temperate and subtropical Americas, North Africa, and Eurasia, and have been populated in many other countries throughout the world. They thrive in wetlands, feasting on water plants and smaller animals. Wherever there is a waterway in North America, you are likely to find the mallard duck. It can be observed in both fresh and saltwater wetlands, including parks, small ponds, rivers, lakes, and estuaries. They are considered an invasive species in some regions and are very adaptable. The mallard usually feeds by dabbling, hence the name dabbling duck. They eat mostly gastropods and insects but their diet varies somewhat. They also enjoy worms, plant matter, and perhaps even an occasional amphibian or two. A very social animal, the duck usually nests on the riverbank, but not always near water. It is highly gregarious outside of the breeding season and forms large flocks, which are known as sorties. Mallards usually form pairs in October and November in the Northern Hemisphere until the female lays eggs at the start of the nesting season, which is around the beginning of spring. At this time, she is left by the male. Nesting sites are typically on the ground hidden in vegetation where the female's speckled plumage serves as an effective camouflage. Egg clutches number from around eight 
to 13 eggs incubated in just under 30 days. The resulting ducklings are parochial, fully capable of swimming upon hatching. When they are old enough to fly, they learn about and remember their traditional migratory routes. Mallards are one of the most common varieties of ducks hunted as sport due to their large population size. In addition to human hunting, mallards of all ages, especially the young ones, and in all locations, must contend with a wide diversity of predators. The most prolific natural predators of adult mallards are red foxes and the faster larger birds of prey, such as falcons or eagles. They can also be preyed upon by other waterside apex predators, such as herons. Since ancient times, the mallard has also been of dietary interest to the human population. The wild mallard was eaten in Neolithic Greece for sustenance. Overall, however, our relationship with this colorful, relatively gentle creature is that of a peaceful encounter. We often enjoy observing them as we unwind from daily stressors near a therapeutic waterway. Large numbers of these small, sleek-looking birds inhabit wetlands and coastlines throughout the western United States. Black-necked stilt is generally a bird that lives in the lowlands, but can be found at altitudes above 2,500 meters in areas around Central America. This quick little bird enjoys feasting on aquatic invertebrates such as insects and worms. Though it rarely breeds inland, the riparian locations here in Arizona are a notable exception. Clutch sizes are on average around four eggs. Within two hours of hatching, the juveniles can be seen swimming and moving at high velocities on land. Breeding begins at around one to two years after birth. Due to human expansion, populations have declined somewhat in the 20th century. But overall, the species are very prevalent over a wide area. As such, they are easily observed here in Arizona and fun to watch. In fact, they often give the local heron population a run for their money. There are different species of herons to be found in the reclamation basins. Among them, the snowy egret. This particular form of egret is native to North, Central, and South America. Found in wetlands of all types, it has a year-round presence in South America, while migratory in the southwestern United States. The bird eats fish, crustaceans, insects, worms, amphibians, and small reptiles. They will often stir up their food by shuffling their feet around in the water. The white heron may also use a combination of different types of swaying head movement, wing flapping, and bill vibrations to flush out prey. Conversely, they may simply choose to stand perfectly still, waiting to ambush their dinner. Engaging in mixed colony breeding, mates may include several different types of herons, including the larger great egret, seen here standing in the foliage. The bird was once endangered, but the population has rebounded under the protection of the Migratory Bird Treaty Act. Despite this, populations in the southern United States are still in decline due to wetland degradation caused by groundwater extraction, grazing, and exotic plant invasion. As the wind blows through the basin, little blue herons fight to steady themselves on these branches. They are comfortable here, preferring to nest in trees alongside other roosting birds. As early as 15 days after they are born, they are able to begin climbing branches. Not a climber, the great blue heron is found throughout North America and some parts of South America, from Alaska to Colombia. It is the largest of all herons native to North America, second worldwide only to the aptly named Goliath heron found in Africa. There are many great blues found year-round in the southern U.S. and lower Pacific coasts, but they are a hardy bird, 
where individuals sometimes weather the cold northern winters as well. The large wading bird can adapt to and inhabit almost any wetland habitat in its range. A solitary feeder, great blue herons locate their food by sight and usually swallow it whole. The mostly foraging hunter can also feed in open fields and sometimes drop from the air into the water. They usually breed in colonies and in trees close to the wetlands. These colonies can be very large, sometimes with up to four or 500 nests. Another highly visible species at Water Ranch is the American White Pelican. This species boasts the second largest wingspan of any North American bird. The title for first place goes to the California Condor. Hundreds of these birds can be found nesting in pairs in inland North American freshwater lakes. The northernmost known colony can be found on the Slave River between the Northwest Territories and Fort Fitzgerald, Alberta. They winter as far south as Costa Rica and are rarely found near open oceans. They instead prefer estuaries, bays, and lakes. This particular pelican does not dive for food. Rather, it catches its prey while floating on the surface, consuming on average more than 1.8 kilograms of food daily. Its diet consists mainly of fish. They often work together while feeding, congregating in large groups to corral fish to one another. This behavior sometimes results in what is known as kleptoparasitism, the act of stealing food from one another. These birds are known to periodically nest in colonies to avoid predators. All in all, they paint a very beautiful scene against the backdrop of the riparian, one that is well worth the visit to witness. This is a male brewer's blackbird, distinguishable by its brightly colored yellow eyes. The female's eyes are a brownish gray color. They normally wade for insects in shallow waters. Here, however, they are exhibiting a rarer dietary habit, picking away at what appears to be a small fish on the shoreline. They have been known to dabble in this arena, eating smaller animals, amphibians, and even the nestlings of other birds. Hiding in this tree is the ladder back woodpecker, so named for a barred pattern on its back and wings, resembling the look of a ladder. Nesting in tree trunks, these small birds are typically found year-round over the southern United States in dry, brushy areas and thickets. While birds present the greatest number of vertebrates in the preserve, there are many ground-dwelling creatures that also inhabit the area. The rock squirrel is native to Mexico and the southern United States. They are active in early morning and late afternoon when the weather is warm. They are social animals living in colonies with several females and one dominant male. Subordinate males lurk at the outer boundaries of the group. They burrow to provide shelter. This small herbivore is seen here along the trailway foraging in the afternoon sun for leaves, stems, and seeds. Though not common to the area, just feet away along the shoreline is the pond slider. This medium-sized semi-aquatic turtle is often seen sunning itself near the surface of the water. If it senses danger, it will shoot back in quickly and swim away to safety. Quite similar in appearance to the European rabbit, the desert cottontail is seen here near the foliage where it takes refuge in a burrow. The burrows are often created by other animals and abandoned. Their lifespan after reaching adulthood averages less than two years. The spot that this animal occupies in the food chain is an unfortunate one. It is preyed upon by nearly every local carnivore including a multitude of feral cats that have taken up residence in the area. Around the next bend in the pathway, we are greeted by the agile dragonflies. Here, a male and a female can be seen mating while in flight. The female 
will later split open a stem or the leaf of a plant near the water and deposit her eggs safely inside. The morning dove. It is one of the most abundant and widespread of all North American birds and a popular game bird. Its ability to sustain its population under such pressure is due to its prolific breeding. In warm areas, one pair may raise up to six broods of two young each in a single year. The wings make an unusual whistling sound upon takeoff and landing, a form of sonation. The bird is a strong flyer, capable of reaching speeds of up to 88 kilometers per hour. Gamble's quail is a small ground-dwelling bird. It can be found in the desert regions of Arizona, California, Colorado, New Mexico, Nevada, Utah, Texas, and Sonora. They primarily move about by walking and can move surprisingly fast through brush and undergrowth. They are a non-migratory species and are rarely seen in flight. Their flights are usually quick and explosive. The female typically lays 10 to 12 eggs in a simple scrape concealed in vegetation, often at the base of a rock or a tree. Incubation lasts just shy of 23 days and is usually performed by the female. The chicks will leave the nest with their parents within hours of hatching. Feeding along the shoreline is the black-crowned night parrot. These birds stand still at the water's edge and wait to ambush prey, mainly at night or in the early morning. They primarily eat small fish, leeches, and earthworms. They are among the seven heron species observed to engage in bait fishing, luring or distracting fish by tossing edible or inedible buoyant objects into the water within their striking range. This is a rare example of tool use among birds. There are so many more species to learn about here, far too numerous to cover all at once. In the end, however, the vision of the riparian preserve at Water Ranch is to be recognized as a premier education and recreation resource in Arizona while preserving natural resources, supporting the creation and conservation of scarce riparian areas and protecting much needed habitat for wildlife.